uh, we've just seen and derived a very simple criterion for efficiency of um, the economy and the uh, labor market. So what we said is that uh, we derived it in a very simple Beveridgean framework, and now we're going to apply it to the US labor market. Uh, so what we said is that uh, we can just, by comparing unemployment rate to vacancy rate, we can figure out whether our economy is efficient, inefficiently slight, inefficiently tight. The key thing is whether the unemployment rate is above the vacancy rate, in which case you're too slack, or below, in which case you're uh, too tight. So here, what I'm showing you below here, uh, so these are unemployment rate and vacancy rate in the US. Um, and so the kind of data sources uh, that we've seen, so these are well known. So if you want, we have kind of, uh, we have several, so here we have roughly the 50s, and here we have some more modern era starting 2000. So what we saw is that uh, you have different uh, data source. So here below nine, before uh, basically 1948, uh, well, you know, I guess the data depends a little bit. So let's say here we have roughly 1950 and here we have roughly 2000. Uh, so after 2000, unemployment rate that come from the CPS, vacancy rate that come from JOLTS. Uh, then between the 50s and 2000, unemployment rates that's again the CPS, uh, vacancy rate of JOLTS didn't exist at the time. Uh, and so this comes from the conference board, which is uh, an organization uh, that collected uh, job advertisement in newspaper across the US um, and they collected you know in, in big cities and then they aggregated to do a conference board index um, and then before 1950 uh, the unemployment rate vacancy rate they come from a bunch of different sources because there was no um, governmental agencies that uh, systematically measured unemployment and systematically measured vacancies. Uh, nevertheless, you have historical data and, and the NBR has actually uh, collected all these different um, sources of data for unemployment vacancy and they've patched them together into history uh, files that you can use um, to have unemployment and vacancies. Um, so these are uh, a bunch of sources, but nevertheless, you can have a continuous series for unemployment rate, vacancy rate from 1930 to today, so which is very good. Um, so this is what we have, and here everything is expressed as a share of the labor force. So unemployment is always expressed as a share of the labor force, unemployment rate. Vacancy rate, actually here you have to be a bit careful because um, the BLS of uh, reports a vacancy rate, but that's not vacancy as a share of the labor force. Usually they report number of vacancies divided by number of unemployed plus number of vacancies, but number of unemployed plus number of vacancies is not the size of the labor force. So, And the BLS reports a rate that's kind of not helpful because it doesn't have theoretical underpinning. Like there's no model in which the vacancy rate that they report is helpful. Um, so you've got to construct your own vacancy rate using the size of the labor force reported by CPS and number of vacancies reported by uh, by the PLS and but it's uh, you know by JOLTS but that's very you know other sources but that's very easy. Um, so anyway, here we have vacancy rate, unemployment rate for the US, and um, so any period that is in kind of an orange uh, that in that is an in orange shaded area is going to be inefficiently tight because that's when vacancy is above, uh, vacancy rate is above the unemployment rate. Any period that has a blue shaded area that's inefficiently slack, that's because the unemployment rate is above the vacancy rate. And when the unemployment rate and vacancy rate cross, that's efficient. So what can we see here? So first of all, of course, we can see that we have here, we have the Great Depression. And here, unsurprisingly, you can see the unemployment rate was way above the vacancy rate, and so the economy was too slack, massively too slack. Of course, unemployment rate was almost 25%.
you can see that the unemployment you know slowly decreased uh, and then just before the end of world war ii here uh, unemployment rate and vacancy rates crossed, so the labor market just became efficient. But um, towards the end of World War II, actually, there were many more vacancies than unemployed. Um, and so the economy became too tight at the end of the World War II. And that's not surprising. When you have a war, you have two things that, con that uh, contribute to tightness. You have a lot of production uh, to build the military you know, apparatus. Um, and so all this production towards building military stuff that boosts aggregate demand so that you know that tends to lead to a very uh, high tightness and furthermore you also have a reduction in the labor force because a lot of young uh, workers were sent overseas to fight in the war and so that really shrinks your labor force and that tends to also lead to higher tightness uh, and so for these two reasons very big demand and very big demand and a low uh, big aggregate demand and uh, low labor supply due to the war leads to very high tightness, uh, as we've seen in our models. So that's not surprising. So here's that the first time that the economy was inefficiently uh, tight is after uh, World War II. Uh, then after that, you see you have a kind of a uh, recession that followed the war. Then you have a second period in the 50s where you have a little bit. Uh, The second plan in the 50s, where for just a little bit of time, the uh, vacancy rate is above the unemployment rate. So this is another period in which the labor market is a bit too tight. And once again, this corresponds to a war. So uh, this is actually uh, the Korea, uh, the Korean War. And so once again, uh, the US uh, go to war, and once again, your labor market is inefficiently tight. After that, you have a period during which uh, late 50s and 60s, during which the labor market is too slack. And then you have yet another period during which the economy is too tight. And yet again, it's a war. This one is the Vietnam War. Uh, and so towards the end of the Vietnam War, the economy was uh, too tight again. Then after that, you know, unemployment rate goes up in the 70s with all the oil price shock. And then in the 80s, you have a big peak like the, the, the US economy became very slack in the 80s. That's a Volcker recession. Uh, and then uh, you have another recession that's caused by the Iraq war. So you have a, another period of slackness Interesting, during the Iraq war, actually, the economy didn't become uh, too tight. And that's because, you know, not that many people were sent to Iraq. And for the moment, it was a short war. Um, so, you, you know, it didn't, it didn't boost the economy as much as the previous war. Then you have another, uh, you have another increase in slackness. Economy is too slack. That's after the dot-com uh, bubble burst and the associated recession. And then you have a big amount of slackness economy way too slack, that's during the Great uh, Recession, that's 2010. And then you can see just before the, so and then you have a huge spike in unemployment and a big amount, you know, an economy that's way too slack, that corresponds to uh, COVID, COVID-19. But what's interesting, two things are interesting. One is that just before COVID-19, the economy was actually a little bit too tight. Um, so these are the end of the Trump presidency, where the economy was actually running a bit too hot. Then you have COVID-19, where the economy is, of course, too slack. But then in the recovery from COVID-19, the economy became, uh, became too tight again. So uh, after, in 2021 and 2022, the economy is much too... Uh, the economy is much too tight, actually. The vacancy rate is well above the unemployment rate. Um, and currently, we're still in a, in a period when the unemployment rate is below the vacancy rate and the economy is too tight. Now, of course, the Fed has raised of, uh, rates strikingly uh, by you know large amount from 0% to close to 4% now. And so, although unemployment has, hasn't really started to pick up, I imagine that it's going to pick up and the economy is going to become uh, you know, it's going to move from too tight to efficient and probably, you know, if the Fed continues raising rates, probably going to become inefficiently slack um, rapidly. 
But so what are the takeaways from all of this? If we just take a step back and think about uh, the US economy. Um, so one key takeaway, of course, is that uh, the US economy is generally um, too slack. Okay, so this means that in general, uh, the Fed uh, could stimulate the economy more. So in a sense, maybe in general, the monetary policy has been too tight over this period. Two, we can see that uh, there are periods uh, of excessive uh, tightness, and this usually corresponds to war. So the economy is sometimes too tight. Although it's quite rare, I mean, we can count it's just a few years over the entire, uh, of, you know, it's almost 100 years of data that we have here from 1930 to 1922. Um, and I think the economy was too tight. So here I would say two, three, four, five, you know, for less than 10 years. So less than 10% of the time for sure the economy uh, is too tight. So usually during wars. So we have World War II, we have Korea, we have Vietnam. And I guess, you know, then we have COVID, which is kind of a war on its own. Um, <clears throat> but if you want the COVID episode, the COVID recovery is the only really peacetime um, and you know and just a few a few semesters a few quarters before covid during trump these have been so just before the pandemic and just after the pandemic these have been the only peacetime episodes of excessive tightness that the us has has known uh, so that's that, that's quite interesting um, Another thing we can do just briefly, so here we've looked at unemployment vacancies and we got uh, these uh, results. But of course, it's very easy to look at the, at reformulate these results in terms of tightness. So we said uh, we can plot the labor market tightness and then we can look at whether the tightness is above one or below one. That's going to tell us whether the economy is efficient. So you can do that to have kind of an in, in, uh, interesting and alternative representation of these results. We can look at tightness in the US. So here is now a graph of the labor market tightness uh, in the US. So this is just V divided by U, where we take V and U uh, from the previous graph. And efficiency, the efficiency line is when tightness theta is equal to 1. So it's theta equal to V over U. Uh, and so we have this efficient line, and then you find the same, of course, the same result as before. So you can see, uh, so you can see uh, that your economy was uh, too tight here. That's World War II. So just before the, uh, you know, just all the way to 1945. Then you can see you have a little period of excessive uh, tightness that the Korea War, another period of excessive tightness that the Vietnam War. In both cases, Korea and Vietnam, you can see that tightness was just slightly big above one, so it was between one and two. World War II, of course, tightness almost reached seven, so that was massive, a market that was massively tight. Um, then you can see the just before the pandemic, and now in the recovery from the pandemic, the economy is again inefficiently tight. Um, what's interesting is that you can see the tightness, so let me flag that. So level of tightness where we are now, which is, uh, you know, this is, I think, uh, the first quarter of 2022, but first quarter of 2022, second quarter, third quarter, uh, tightness 
was approximately two, and the level of tightness of two is actually something we had never seen. Uh, it's something we had never seen before, except at the end of World War II, where you know the tightness reached seven. Uh, but there is no other time uh, when the labor market tightness in the U.S. was um, close to two. So, so the economy has been really ex exceedingly tight um, in the aftermath of the pandemic due to a mix of things. But, uh, you know, of course, uh, the amount of stimulus uh, during the pandemic, the fact that um, labor supply, so labor supply was, uh, labor force participation really dropped during the pandemic, mostly uh, like initially all sides of the labor market, but mostly now it's a reduction in the participation of older workers. But so less labor supply and a huge aggregate demand, this is a recipe for a very tight market. So your, the your US labor market has been ex exceedingly tight uh, with tightness we had uh, never seen before in peacetime. 